Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. Today I want to talk to you about CircuitPython versus MicroPython, and we'll talk about the key differences between the two. They're both based on the popular Python programming language with added support for hardware, and both CircuitPython and Micro MicroPython are largely the same. The key difference is that CircuitPython is made by Adafruit to support the Adafruit brand boards, the ones that are made specifically for educators and beginners, and MicroPython is a broader category of, um, of boards. So CircuitPython is actually based on MicroPython, so whenever an update comes out for MicroPython, it's then rolled out for CircuitPython as well. And the differences in CircuitPython is just to, like I said, add support for Adafruit's boards. And they make a few changes just to make it a little easier for someone learning to understand what's happening on their board and in their code and make it easier to troubleshoot. So let's take a look at some of the things that are different. Um, one of the first things that's different about CircuitPython is how your code behaves on the microcontroller. So one of the differences that the order that the files are run when you put files onto your microcontroller and whether or not they share any states. In, micro, in MicroPython, you can have different files running at the same time and sharing the, st sharing the same state where in CircuitPython, there's no sharing of states. So when one thing's running, it's the only thing running. And that can make it a lot easier for someone new to understand what's happening if something goes wrong. The boot file, so boot.py or settings.py, only runs once in CircuitPython before the USB is even initialized, and, and then it's not run again. Let's see, code.py, so your main body of code in CircuitPython, is run after each reload until it finishes. And if you want to enter the REPL, you can't be running code.py at the same time, so it'll stop your main body of code and enter the REPL. So there's no shared state between them, which there is a little bit of loss of functionality there for a higher end user, but for most users, it's good that there's no overlap, so it can be a little clearer what's happening. Uh, one of the other nice things that CircuitPython's done, what they've changed is they've created unified hardware APIs. So when you want to utilize hardware on your board, you, you need to include libraries in order to make that happen. And the, the APIs for CircuitPython are much condensed. So if you want to use audio, it's audio IO. If you want to, if you want to use analog, it's analog IO. And it really makes it simple and simple to utilize actual hardware parts without needing to pull in a bunch of libraries or use a bunch of different commands. There's also some changes with modules in CircuitPython. So there's a lot of t changes, or a lot of slightly different time modules. So if you're doing something that involves time and you're moving from MicroPython to CircuitPython, then just be aware to look, look at that and determine if there's any changes that affect your code. If you're new to either, then it's nothing different enough that you need to worry about between if you're going to choose between one or the other. So those wraps, wraps up the differences that I think that the average user would really run into while, while using CircuitPython or MicroPython. If you want to learn how to use CircuitPython, you want to learn how to program with it, we've got a lot of tutorials in our tutorials section about how to program with CircuitPython for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. So go check it out.